you will learn how to configure load balancing to send requests to multiple LLM models within Azure API management. But let's see first why it's important to configure load balancing. So LLM models have their own limitations and constraints. The most known limitation is that those LLM models have limitations for the number of tokens that could be accepted as input. Once this limit is reached, the service will be unavailable and then it will return an error status code that is 429. So your application will need to wait for the next time that the service will be available to a respond. That's the poor user experience. You want the application to be always responding immediately to the user input. So the solutions around this are mainly four solutions. First one is to increase the limits of the LLM model through support requests in Azure, or you can use pay as you go model with the PTU reserved capacity. Or you can also opt for the global or data zone deployments if your organization allows for that, because with those kind of deployments, you have higher limitations for the number of tokens. And the fourth option would be to create multiple instances of LLM models because the limitation is actually related to the LLM instance itself. In this video, we'll explore this option. So with this solution, we can create multiple instances of LLM models in different regions or in the same region. And then from API management, we can configure the load balancing there to send the request to these different instances. And if one of these instances becomes unavailable, then next the other, all the requests will be sent to the instance that is still responding. And it's by default, the load balancing that will be used here is the round robin load balance. Follow me in the next video in order to see a demonstration for how to configure Azure API management to load balance the traffic between multiple instances of uh, OpenAI that are in different regions. In this demonstration, you will learn how to configure Azure API management to load balance the traffic to multiple backend instances of type Azure OpenAI that will use the LLM model ChatGPT. Through this demonstration, you will learn how you can also define different weights and priorities for each backend. So on this config, for example, we'll send 70% of the traffic to the UK South instance, 20% to the Sweden Central, and 10% to the France Central, for example. All the files required for this lab, including the Terraform files, are available within this uh, GitHub repository that I have cloned in my machine right here. So first thing that we'll go to do here is that we'll go to deploy those resources using Terraform. To do that, actually, we need to run the Terraform commands, Terraform init and uh, apply dash auto approve. And that will go to deploy the different resources into the Azure subscription. I have already done that. So that created the following resources in my Azure subscription. These resources are an Azure API management and three instances in three different Azure regions for Azure AI services. Each one contains a ChatGPT model. Let's take a look at the Terraform code that creates all of, created all of these resources. So let's start with the AI services. So here we are creating three instances of AI services because here we, are, we have a for each that will create the instances described inside this uh, uh, variable called OpenAI uh, config. And here we have the a map with the three uh, values. So each one will have a name for the OpenAI uh, or for the AI services instance, the location, a priority, they all have the same priority actually, but different weights. So 74 UK South, 24 Sweden Central, and 10 for France Central. So because we have three instances here, three instances of Azure AI services will be created. And for each instance, you would have a ChatGPT for O model that will be uh, created. After that, we go to create an Azure API management. We enable um, system assigned identity, and then we give it the right airbag access role with the role Cognitive Services OpenAI user to access the uh, Azure AI services. After that, we go to configure the Azure API management. So we import the OpenAPI spec or the Swagger file for the Azure OpenAI. And then we configure a policy here that is called, uh, that is described within the file policy.xml. This policy will contain the authentication part to get an access token from the managed identity and pass it uh, in a bearer request. Note that also this policy will contain also a retry block. So each time we detect that one of the three models uh, responds with 429, this means that the limits are, are reached. 
then this will will not respond to the application with that status code but instead it will retry the same request and because this is using round robin then the second request will go to another instance of the uh, LLM that might respond if it does not respond then the request will be sent to a third uh, instance so we try up to two times if after two times we don't have uh, a response then in this case the API management will respond to the client with another status code that would be right here 503 and that is backend pool unavailable so mainly the objective of this uh, uh, policy is to define the backends or the multiple uh, backends for the different LLM models so for that we are providing here a backend ID but this is only one backend not three actually what we are doing here is that we are creating different uh, backends so we are creating three backends a backend for each uh, instance of the LLM model and for each backend we are providing the AI services a URL kind of view this configuration when you go to the API management then you navigate to uh, backends so you see the three backends created right here and each one have its own URL for the uh, cognitive services or for the Azure AI services with the endpoint dash open AI but note here we have a fourth backend pool this one actually is the backend pool that will send the requests to these three backends so within our configuration we need to make sure to use that backend pool for the gateway next here we configure the circuit breaker so we do that actually not through the Azure RM because this is not yet supported in Azure RM so we use the AZ API Terraform provider in order to do that so we typically here pass this uh, body where we specify in the properties the circuit breaker where we specify the rules here so when we receive a status code 429 then the circuit will be opened and the request will go to the next instance after that we create here the backend pool open api again we use the az api and here we uh, add in the pool object we add the three services for the open ai each one with its own priority that we have specified within the variable so it will take those values right here and the way their way and then we create a subscription key to connect to the Azure API management from the application and we export that subscription key along with the resource gateway URL now once all these resources are created we'll go to test access to these uh, services using the Azure API management and we'll see how the traffic is distributed across the different three regions and that's going to be the topic for the next video now that we have created all of these resources and configured load balancing on the Azure API management for the different LLM instances let's go to test access from an application that's going to be a Jupyter Notebook in the same repository we can find the file for the Jupyter Notebook right here so we have already deployed the resources using Terraform init and apply so and then we need to export the values that are required for testing so we need to get the Azure API management gateway URL we'll go to take that from the exported values remember that uh, from output.tf we are exporting the gateway url and the subscription key we'll go to import these two resources into environment variables so for that i'm using here terraform output in order to get the value of these two different uh, uh, variables and then we get the variables for api version model name and deployment name if i run this then we should see here the value for the api uh, resource gateway and the subscription key Next, we'll go to proceed to the testing through direct HTTP request using the requests library. So to do that here, we construct the URL and then we'll run 20 requests because here we want to see how the traffic is load balanced to the different instances of the LLM models. So we'll run 20 requests and we'll see for each request to which instance the traffic was sent. So let's hit run so for to get the the instance actually first we check the status code if it's uh, okay or not and then we check the headers we look for a header that is called xms region so this will give us the azure region that accepted the traffic and then we go just to display it so as we see here we can see the uh, different requests so first request was 200 okay and it was sent to the instance to the LLM instance inside UK South the, the second one also was UK South then UK South and so on now let's plot 
a graph that will show us the regions that accepted this traffic so for that we'll be using panda with mat uh, plot li library and we'll go to show for each request to which region it was sent and the duration of that request so as we see here the first seven regions or the first seven requests have been sent to the same region remember that is because actually we have set 70% of the traffic to be sent to the UK South region and then 20% of the traffic will be sent to the Sweden Central which is represented here in uh, yellow and that was our configuration 20% to the Sweden Central and then 10% to France Central with the color blue so we see it right here